Hey everyone, welcome. Thanks for dropping in. My name is Jill and in a different spot tonight. Um, my pronouns are they and them and I'm one of the Dharma teachers with True North Insight and uh, thanks for practicing with us here in the Zoom room or later on on the YouTube channel as you're able. Uh, I can't change my camera, but, so um, <laughs> it'll be like this. So uh, apologies, first of all, to anyone that was waiting to get into the Zoom room last week. I'm so sorry. I did notify the week before, but some people didn't get that message and were waiting to log in. And that's such a drag. I, I, I totally get how frustrating that is. So again, apologies if that happened to you. Uh, I should have sent another message last week. And um, last week I was in Tomogamy, Northern Ontario, um, in a, you know, portaging and canoeing camping trip for, I guess it was five days. Uh, and before I went, I was mentioning to folks that I would be going and that um, we're kind of a chatting about mosquitoes and I said you know I might might give a dharma talk on mosquitoes so here it is <laughs> and one of many dharma tattoos that I have but I think it's the second one I got is a mosquito <laughs> most people don't have mosquito tattoos but uh let's see it's kind of hard to show but it's uh, we can get in there to the camera. It's kind of like in a frame in a little square. And so that's right close where I can see it and hopefully remember its message. So the um, the what, what, inspiration for that tattoo was uh, a story shared by a a yoga yoga teacher. I was also a yoga teacher before I stopped doing that. <clears throat> and his name was Swami Mukti Dharma. Uh, Swami Mukti. And we were at a just a weekend yoga and meditation retreat um, with him. And at the end of the retreat, there's that feeling that comes with most retreats, meditation retreats, definitely. I think probably most, off, not most, many retreats is that feeling like, oh, how do I take this home with me? <laughs> how do I remember this? How do I integrate this into daily life? You know, because you're in that whole retreat package and you know, being guided and supported in the whole sangha or community feeling, taking you through that. And, and then you're like, huh, now I got to go home. So we were sitting around kind of um, when the formal retreat had ended. And I think I asked him a question along along those lines. And this was the story he shared without much. It, it, it was shared in a way that was like, make your own meaning out of that, which I did. <clears throat> so I will try to retell the way that it landed for me. And apologies to Mukti if I'm uh, retelling incorrectly. <clears throat> In this story, he contexted as as a story that was happening in India. He was from India. No, he was not. Inner dialogue. No, he was not. Um, so the story is happening in India, but it's very global, 
very universal story. And it's about, as he told it, a blind man, we could say a blind person or an unsighted person. And they were living in a, a walled community in a, in a um, kind of a safe compound like a, a, that had a wall around it as, as uh, protection and community and safety. And as this person grew through the years and, and gained a lot of skills and abilities and ways of navigating in the world, they came to a place where they felt like they were able to leave this uh, container of community and move out to navigate in the world on their own. And so they, um, in the morning, started to pack up their belongings and get ready and say some farewells, et cetera, and uh, eventually made their way, you know, could feel their way to the walls of the this area, the, the stone wall, and started to walk along feeling this the wall. Um, if you've been to India, but also if you're here <laughs> in, uh, we were just chatting before in the Zoom room about uh, Ontario and as I was saying, Northern Ontario, Tamagami, where I was camping, anywhere that has mosquitoes, you, uh, he, this person was, you know, feeling along the wall, looking for the gate, the exit, and uh, mosquitoes were swarming around and uh, kind of, uh, you know, well, that sound when they're in your ear, that's, ah, they, uh, and so, you know, sometimes spotting at them and then trying to get back to the wall and, and could feel eventually like they made their way all the way around and could not find the exit. They're not, they don't usually use the exit, but they just couldn't find the way out. So eventually they made their, uh, kind of realized they'd come all the way around again and went to speak to the elders of the community, the wisdom keepers, and uh, said, you know, yeah, I feel ready to move on. Um, this is the situation. And I can't find the, the gate, the exit. Um, so they said, oh, that's, that's odd. We'll try again. And this time we'll, we'll, Keep an eye on you and we'll watch and and make sure you find your way. So this person goes back to the wall. You know, they're a bit more frustrated now, a bit more tired. It's later in the day, hotter, more mosquitoes flying around. They're a little bit more irritated or ready and they're back at the wall, finding, feeling along, feeling along. And so now that, you know, they're even a little bit more bothered and swatting around and and going back and trying to and feel along the wall. And so the folks watching and observing could see that they missed the exit. They mi missed the way to freedom. They missed the path. They missed the opening because they were distracted by life's little annoyances. So <laughs> at the end of that retreat with Swami Mukti Dharma, that was a story that he told. And I, it really landed for me as like, can't take the retreat with you and all those causes and conditions, but don't let yourself be distracted by life's little annoyances, the mosquitoes of life. Of course, it's not about mosquitoes. It's about all the things, all the things, all the everythings, all the little things that aren't just how you want them to be, aren't just right, isn't just... Other people aren't how you want them to be. I'm not how I want myself to be. On and on and on. All these little things that just aren't 
that are distracting and annoying, frustrating, irritating, etc. In the Dharma, we know this is dukkha. And dukkha, I shouldn't just throw that out, means <clears throat> not getting what you want and not getting rid of what you don't want. It means being uh, clinging to how you want things to be, which is not how they are in any given moment, likely. There's lots more to say about dukkha, but I won't uh, go too far off course, hopefully. So, so I made myself this reminder to remember it's just a little annoyance. It's just a, it's just something you don't like, darling. <laughs> and and I'm glad it's there because I constantly need these reminders. Uh, so in Northern Ontario, this is, uh, in July, mid July, when this is, uh, reporting is happening. And when I was up there, uh, there was a lot of mosquitoes and a lot of deer flies. They're the ones that they take, they like it. They like, they like it, the flesh, they take a chunk. They're not just taking a little poke. <laughs> there was a lot. And so, of course, it's, it's not about mosquitoes. We're talking about dharma here. We're talking about peace of mind or lack of peace of mind. And so some strategies, perhaps, that relate to mosquitoes and hopefully to life. One of them might be to plan ahead. Now, in the Dharma, we always talk about present moment, present moment. And, uh, you know, don't be projecting or forecasting too much into the future because, of course, we don't know how some things are going to turn out, and that's just another form of clinging. However, <laughs> sometimes it can be wise, skillful, helpful to... have a sense of, you know, when am I heading into a swarm of mosquitoes? <laughs> mm, what situations are going to be really irritating, stressful, triggering for me, activating? Uh, so a little bit of foresight can be helpful to plan ahead. So, for instance, knowing I was going to tomogamy, um, you know, getting one of the hats with the mosquito screening over it, um, and 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 several other protections that I'll mention, but <clears throat> kind of planning ahead because I know I'm heading into that. So, how does that apply to life for us? Well, I know I'm going to this gathering. I know I'm getting pretty tapped out. I know I'm, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, there's going to be a lot asked of me at work in this coming week. Not as a way to cling to or try to control things that are beyond our ability or, or yeah, our scope to have a handle on but just to anticipate what do I need to to be able to still be skillful and kind to myself and to others so that might be something to reflect on a little bit and see if that's helpful for you um and then the other aspect about mosquitoes and life is protection. So I mentioned the, you know, the hat with the mosquito nets, netting, and also the um, mosquito repellent that we uh, took with us and used to prevent that 
that stress, that annoyance, that um, of being stung and bitten often. And um, so part of that is the planning ahead or a little bit of anticipation and, you know, what kind of self-care is needed, what kind of um, attention is going to be required going into this. And then for in our daily lives, protection for me, the main source of protection is the precepts. Our ethical values and heart mind protection, chitta, heart mind, <clears throat> the precepts. And um, particularly, we're talking about precepts for lay people. And if you if you're not familiar with those, it's just to reflect on what are your values, what are your core guidelines that are protect your heart, body, mind, and are a source of protection for others. By taking care of others, we take care of ourselves. By taking care of ourselves, we take care of others. And so the five precepts are to undertake, to endeavor, to undertake the training to not cause harm in all of its forms. And I undertake the training to refrain from taking what isn't freely given, taking more resources, more all the all the anything you want to apply that to am i taking more than is freely given this is also a protection for ourselves and others that's two precepts the third one is i undertake the training to refrain from causing harm with my sensuality and sexuality so it's related to Greed is 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 there any harm being done in relationship to myself and others and all beings uh, through any form that desire is taking? It's not inherent. These are just things to reflect on. Not taking the oh yeah, I undertake the training to refrain from speaking falsely. Sometimes this is expanded to include speaking harshly, again, to self or others. Yes. And the last one is I undertake the training to refrain from heedlessness, meaning non-mindfulness, lack of mindfulness caused by intoxicants. Any form that is intoxicating drugs, alcohol, technology, etc. To undertake the training to notice when it's causing heedlessness. So these five precepts or whatever your core values are, to see them as your, your bug, spray, bug spray, as your um, protection protection from causing harm in all of its different forms. <clears throat> so along with, <laughs> just noticing myself getting itchy because I'm talking about mosquitoes. <laughs> How many people are scratching right now? <laughs> That's funny. Um, <clears throat> along with some, um, pre-awareness as to what we're going into and what's needed, as well as this second aspect of protection um, from, yeah, protection with our precepts or values. Uh, the third thing that I was reflecting on in tomogamy and since then is uh, space, spaciousness. And this was another Another thing that we planned uh, was bringing, a, it was something new that we 
got this here that it's just like a kind of a tarp roof with uh, ropes that tied to trees. It's only four pounds something. It's nice and light and packed up small and uh, had bug netting that draped down. So you could, you could um, you know, if it's not like a big tent, but just kind of a so great. I spent a lot of time in there. It was so good. It was really, really helpful. Um, yeah, and that just gave enough space to be able to chill <laughs> a little bit of space to rest and relax and there the mosquitoes are just like at that net just like what what is this madness let us in they were just like <laughs> on the walls of it and it was so so helpful and so relaxing just to have that bit of space between us and, uh, you know, so how does that apply to daily life? How do we attain that space energetically, psychically, if you will, mentally, emotionally? And um, you, you would need to reflect on what, how that is for you. How do you find that when things feel like they're closing in and you feel that contraction, that irritation, that frustration, that uh, inner fire, dukkha, um, how do you get some space from it? So one way might be in nature to actually like literally space, get outside. <laughs> And just let the eyes stretch. If you have windows that have a view that can just let the eyes stretch, it makes a huge shift. Being able to see the sky, because we get so like looking down and so contracted and so uh, in our, uh, what is it? it yeah. Mm -hmm in our contraction, that we can lose that perspective of just looking up, big sky. It just, even if you just think about it right now, I feel that shift in energy and space, a little bit of peace. Uh, so literally finding some physical space, lifting the eyes is very helpful could be very helpful. Um, and even if you're in a, a place where a circumstance where you're not able to get outside, just literally feeling the space around you in the room that you're in right now. We'll practice with this tonight. You know, because we can get so, um, you know, when mosquitoes of the mind are uh gnawing at us we feel that contraction mm, and lack of perspective and literally just paying attention to the space around ourselves behind side to side above front all directions just in the space that you're in shifts the whole nervous system yeah i think that's it for mosquito dharma tonight I'll just see um yeah so to remember the kind of punchline of the story for from swami mukta dharma was for me uh the the opening the gate the 
possibility for freedom, liberation, uh, sukha, the opposite of dukkha, is available every moment, all the moments. And it depends on if we're getting distracted by life's little annoyances. Yes, sometimes they're big annoyances, I'm aware. Um, however, when we practice with the little things, this gives us some capacity then to meet with the bigger and the big and the biggest things. So that gate that that person was searching for was right there and they were just missing it. And it's always right here. Are we missing it? All right, let's practice. Let's have a meditation practice. So uh, adjust your posture or your space or uh, whatever you need. I'm just going to uh, tweak how I am and have some water. <clears throat> So take your time to adjust your posture and your space so that you feel supported and at ease as much as is available to you right now. And if you like, or if you feel it might be helpful, you might take some time to actually look around your space if there's a window you might look into the distance and let yourself just feel that physical memory so to look at the space in your room in front of you side to side windows maybe above you and so that when you do rest the eyes if you if you want to practice with eyes closed or eyes downward, you'll be able to touch into that recollection when we come to that part. And take your time to see if you need any other movement or touch or stretch so that or any other physical support so that when you come to some stillness, if you're practicing in stillness, it doesn't feel imposed, but it feels like a beautiful invitation that you accept to just rest. Rest back and down. Feel into the back of the skull, back of the shoulders, down the spine, back of the hips, back of the legs, and the feet. Let your nervous system rest back and down. Notice how some of the muscles of busyness and fear or tension, anxiety, whatever, um, all these forms this can take, how these contractions in the face, shoulders, 
in the belly. Hands. See if they can soften or let go a little bit or a lot. You might When you feel ready, then we'll bring in some protection, some support by reflecting on your values or recalling the precepts. So paraphrasing, I'll just recall again these five precepts, and then we'll be silent together for a few moments. I undertake these heart trainings to refrain from causing harm, from killing. I undertake this heart training to refrain from taking more than or what isn't freely given. Feel these as protections for yourself and others. I undertake this heart training to refrain from speaking falsely or harmfully. And I undertake this heart training to refrain from causing harm with sensuality or sexuality in whatever way that may show that may be harmful to myself and others. And I undertake this heart training to refrain from lack of mindfulness caused by intoxicants, by heedlessness. See how these land for you and see if you can feel your values, your ethics as protections. Bug spray for the heart mind. And then as you feel the support of your kind intentions, you might take some time to reflect on um, perhaps something that's present for you or may be coming up for you, some challenging environments or situations that you may be needing to do a little bit of pre-awareness with. Not clinging, not creating more suffering, but just, hmm, what do I need going into this? How can I show up as my best self given these conditions? Let's see if there's anything there that needs some wise intention, wise effort, wise actions. 
Let's be with that for a few moments together. Good. And then reconnect with the sensation, the felt experience here and now of resting back and down. Let any tension that accumulated from that reflection soften. Feel the back body. Connection with the ground. Back and down here and now. There might now be some awareness of what mosquitoes have been distracting you from the, the possibility of peace and freedom here and now. Anything that's up for you, perhaps in this day or recently in this whatever period of time where we might, the Buddha did talk about reflecting part of wise effort, reflecting, and then uh, having wise intentions going forward. So using this time here to see, hmm, I see I was spotting at mosquitoes <laughs> and I missed Perhaps I missed some opportunities to be peaceful, to be free from Dukkha. Perhaps picture yourself feeling along that stone wall and missing the gate, it was right there. And letting that inquiry and reflection go, rest back and down. And now we'll practice with spaciousness, that even with the eyes closed, we have this sense ability to be able to feel the space just feel the space in front of you. It might be a recollection of where objects are or walls or windows and just feel into that space between the front of the body and that sense of something, some form. Feel the space. And then feel into the space towards your right side, extending from that forward perception into the whole right side. Let that 
awake awareness that's already present sweep into the space that's behind you. And around to the left side. Try not to get too conceptual or work too hard at it. Awareness can just feel into, open into, expand like perfume molecules sprayed into the air, just expanding into the space all around and then when you're ready above and below your beingness awake awareness filling and expanding into this whole space around what we perceive as being me. If you like, you could take these next few moments just to drop a very light awareness, not going into any micro efforting, just knowing there is space also inside this form that I identify as being me and mine, all the space inside the organs and the cells. Not that I'm solid and everything else around me is space. This is all spacious and of the nature of space. And then if it feels accessible or available, awareness can also extend beyond what we're calling walls or solid uh, forms around us and could also be aware of the space outside of the windows and walls, sky, horizon, behind all directions. And feel how it may be possible by attending to the spacious element, space element. It could give us some perspective with whatever mosquitoes are chasing us. And we can just rest and feel some protection, some wisdom when things don't seem quite so close.
Within a moment, when you hear these three bells, see if you can just feel these vibrations extending and vibrating out into the space all around in all directions. So I hope that there is some some dharma there for you, um, mosquito dharma, and uh, may we all be free. <laughs> Thank you for practicing with us. <laughs>